Recording started. Okay, good evening everybody and welcome to another session of organic chemistry. To start the session we are going to uh, go over the the quiz that you just took and I believe uh, many of you want us to do this so we are going to do that. Uh, but before we start the session uh, I have one announcement to make and that is tomorrow, that is Wednesday at 7 p.m. We are going to have the uh, online review session. Okay, the online review session we are going to use the end of chapter problems uh, in our chapter 14 uh, for that session. I will send you the link. I will send you the link tomorrow uh, to join me for that session at 7 p.m. And the link I will send you tomorrow, that will be the link we are going to use for the rest of the semester. Okay. So anytime I say we are going to have a review session, online review session, uh, that is the link that you should use. Okay. Okay, now let us start uh, with today's session. Uh, we have problem number one. Mela, can you go ahead and read that problem for us? The yeah, very good. Okay, so what they want us to do here, of course, is to write the uh, the product of the electrophilic addition reaction uh, to the carbon-carbon double bond. In this particular instance, it just so happens we have two uh, two carbon-carbon double bond in this molecule. Uh, which are conjugated. Ordinarily, if you have a single carbon-carbon double bond and you want to do a electrophilic addition reaction, you get what we call the one-two addition. In other words, you get addition to this carbon and addition to this carbon. And we refer to that as one-two addition. However, because we have a conjugated system here, in addition to the one two addition, we are also going to obtain the one four addition, in which case uh, the, uh, keep in mind now that what we are going to add to this molecule uh, we, we are supposed to add the hydrogen and bromine atoms, okay so in this case, for the one four addition. We will add hydrogen or bromine here, or hydrogen or bromine here. Okay. <coughs> okay. So now, in that case, we are going to get what we call one four addition. So that will be here, and that will be what we call the one four addition. And that is because of the conjugation that gives us the opportunity to write resonance structure for the <coughs> intermediate carbocation. So what will be the product here? Anybody has an idea? What will be the product? Let us give the product of the one for addition first. One for addition product, what would that be? We add in hydrogen and bromine. Where will the hydrogen go? Yes, you know? go ahead. Yes, you form the carbocation. Okay, so you have the hydrogen, so you form the carbon, okay, attack this carbon here, okay, this pi electron will attack this proton here, right, okay, okay, so we have the pi electron attacking this proton, keep in mind the proton is your electrophile, right, and the pi electron will be your nucleophile, okay. <coughs> So in that case, of course, we are going to break the hydrogen bromine bond. And so that gives us this intermediate product.
Now the question I ask for you, Sine, uh, is why are you saying that the hydrogen will go here? Sorry. Something wrong here. Okay. Why, why would the hydrogen go here, Jenny? Do the better. Okay, very good. <laughs> Alelic, okay. <laughs> well, okay, so you say the hydrogen will, I mean, okay, the hydrogen will go here. So now we're going to have CA3 here, right? The hydrogen going here, is that what you say? Okay, and so therefore we're going to form an allylic. Okay, why doesn't the hydrogen go here? Why doesn't the hydrogen go here? Why doesn't the hydrogen go there? That will form a lily too. <laughs> no, seriously, why doesn't it go there? Okay, when you form carbocation, what the, what are the basic rules of uh, carbocation formation? The, the most stable carbocation will be formed, right? Exactly. Anytime you form carbocation, the most stable carbocation will be formed. Okay, so in this particular instance, we have two choices. We have a choice of adding the hydrogen here, right? Or adding the hydrogen here. If we add the hydrogen here, just as we suggested, which is good, we form the secondary allylic carbocation. Okay, right? On the other hand, if we do this, if the hydrogen goes here, if the hydrogen goes here, where this pi letter attacks this, and this goes here, and therefore we are going to form So here we have secondary allylic carbocation, and here we have what? Exactly, tertiary allylic carbocation. Okay, so in this particular instance, we will form the most stable carbocation. So uh, in this case, it doesn't really matter, okay, because you are going to end up forming the same type of product. But the reason I want to bring this up, in certain, in certain instances, it does matter. Okay, it is important to know that any time you form carbocation, the more stable carbocation will be preferred, in, in other words, will be formed, yes. So if we do it anyway, hmm? the discussion, please cut it. No, no, you, uh, you get some credit, you get some credit, but let's finish this and see what are we going to get, okay? Because in this particular instance, we're going to form, we're going to form two products, okay? And in this case, if we're going to form two products, the second product here, keep in mind at this point, keep in mind that when you do the, we have uh, bromide here, and the bromide will be acting as a what? The bromide will act as what? As a nucleophile, okay? So the bromide will now, at this point, will attack this. Attack this carbon, carbocation here. And then you get this product. Get that product. That would be the case of one, two addition, right? Now, how do we get the one, four addition? So this would be one of the products. This is one of the products. Okay, how would you get the one, four addition product? David, okay, are you raising your hand? Okay. Uh, write the resonance structure, or in other words, this here, this double bond, 
through here? Okay, good. Okay, let me get this out of the way. So we have some room here. Okay, so at this point we want to write the resonance contribution for this. And what do we want to do? Take this out. Okay, is that right? Okay. So now we write the rational structure. Okay, <coughs> we form that, right? So what happens at this point? The bromine will not act as a as a nucleophile exactly. So the bromine now comes in, attacks this primary carbocation, <coughs> and then you form You have to do the resonance in order to give uh, the mechanism. See, keep in mind you are told to give the mechanism for this reaction. So now you have this. Okay, so you have two products. This product here, uh, which is due to the 1 4 addition, and this product, which is due to the 1 2 addition. Okay? Now, however, if this is what you gave me, just like uh, Shine started with, if you did, if you did the one two addition here, I will also give you your credit. In other words, this here. Well, on the on the, in any exam or quiz, I want you to work with the most stable yes carbocation. In other words, the the product that comes from the most stable carbocation is what I will be looking for. So, but in this particular instance, if this is what you have, if this is what you have, you have the carbocation here, and then of course you have the The bromine coming in, attacking that. Okay. To form this product. Okay, if you form that product, I will also give you some cre your credit, okay? Okay? If you give that product, I will also give you credit. That is a product of one, two addition. But the point I want to stress here is that in the future, uh, you, the major product will be that that comes from the uh, most stable carbocation. Okay? Now, in this particular instance, if you want to do the one, two addition product, what would that be? The one to addition product will be what? Let me get rid of this. I'm, I'm sorry, the one for addition product from this here. Okay, move the resonance, exactly. Excellent. So, okay, we draw a resonance. Move this to here. Hmm. And if you do that, we form this here, this resonance structure. I'm sorry. Double bond is here. Now the carbocation is here. Uh, now you now have your bromine. coming in to attack 
رب فرمایی تب و قدرن تو گیوریز کارا اوکی یس میداشت گوهی Yes. When you do the resonance, mm-hmm. um, why can't the double bond with me go, like, what? Which one? This couple cut on here? Yeah. Uh, which one? The one I did the first time? Okay. Okay, let me raise this. Okay, uh, Melad is asking a question here. He Say, after I did the first carbocation, where did the hydrogen go? The hydrogen goes here. The hydrogen goes here, right? Okay, okay, okay. So if we say that, if we say the hydrogen goes there. Notice how we do this. Uh, the arrow shows that you have two electrons uh, moving, right, to attack the, the electrophile. Okay. If we do that, then we are going to get a tertiary carbocation, right? Okay, so where do you want to go with that? Okay, so I have that, and then for the rest of that, mm-hmm. I have the double bond, so I have the plus bond moved to the right next to it. Okay. You want to, okay, write the resonance for that, right? Yes. So that means that you're moving this here. That's what we did. I thought that's what we did. Okay, if I move that, the cover cut iron comes to this cover. I put the cover cut iron Where? Yes. Yeah. I moved it there. Right here? No, no, I don't. How will you move the carbocation there? No, that's no. If you have this, you, okay, you have this tertiary carbocation, and then you have to move this pi electron. Yeah, why can't you move it all the way to the Or move it to here. She said move it all the way to the left between the CH3 and the carbocation. Right here. This is an sp3 carbon. You cannot move uh, the pi electron. You're jumping over this carbon here. You've got to move the pi electron because the, the, there is a vacant p orbital on this carbocation. That's why you're moving the pi electron there. Okay? Anyway, if you are confused, you know, if you are sitting okay, I see me after the class. Uh, let's finish this uh, question number one, and then let's go to number two at this point. Yes. Somebody has a question? Okay. Okay, let's do number two. <coughs> okay, I may ask, let's say, may I didn't read, uh, go ahead and read this first. The structure of the product and the following deals all the reactions shown in the appropriate Okay, very good. Now, in this particular instance, what we have here, we have this, we have this dyne, and then we have the dynophile, and this is the dyne right here. And what they want us to do is to write the product of the Diels other reaction. Now, if you look at this molecule, with, the, with uh, regard to the carbon-carbon double bond, uh, the conformation that you have here, this is what we call the trans conformation. Because if you look at this, this here, this is the single bond. Look at the single bond that joins the two carbon-carbon double bond, right? Okay, this double bond is on this side of that single bond, right? And this double bond is on the other side of the do- uh, single bond. And that is why we say this is a trans conformation. Uh, you cannot do those other reactions using the trans conformation. 
So in order for you to do the biosaga, you need to <coughs> uh, rotate this single bond so that the, you obtain the cis conformation of, uh, of the carbon-carbon double bond in relation to each other. Okay, this is what we have. This is the same molecule. Uh, look at this here. Okay, this is your methyl right here, right? Okay, this is another methyl group. Can you all see this? Okay, so that you can see this. Now, this is your double bond, right? Your single bond. Your double bond, right? They are on opposite side of the single bond. So therefore, we say this is the trans conformation. You follow that? Everybody follow that, right? Okay. Now, in order for you to do a dual side reaction, you have to rotate this single bond. You see? Now, once you do that, now you get the cis conformation. Cis conformation with regard to the two double bonds on the same side of this single bond. You follow that? So you have to rotate the single bond that joins the two carbon-carbon double bonds to get the cis conformation. Now, once you do that, let's do this again. You see, <coughs> this is the methyl group, right? This is the met. This also this is the methyl group. In relation to this structure here, this methyl group and this methyl group, they are pointing in the same direction. Okay, the moment you, you rotate, they will now be on opposite direction, so they will now be trans to each other. So when you write your product, this here and this here must be trans in the product. You see, this metal now is now trans to this metal. Okay, so that is what I'm going to do now. Okay, so now I take, <coughs> this is the same molecule here. In order for us to do the, to, to do the dual side reaction, what I will do, I will rotate this, okay? I will rotate that. Once I do that, this is what I obtain. The sixth member ring is still there. This is still here. This double bond is still here. Now, once you rotate, now this is here. Now, the double bond will now be here. Okay? Now, this metal now will now be here. Okay? Once you rotate, keep in mind, in this case, this metal and this metal are pointing in the same direction. But once you rotate, they will be pointing in different directions. This is pointing to here, and this is still pointing to here. So in this case now, they are now trans to each other. Okay? Now what we now have, the conjugation that you have, the conjugated system you have here, this is now what we call the cis conformation. Okay, that is the cis conformation. Okay, so now once we now once you have now uh, rotated to obtain your cis conformation, now we're going to do the Diosada reaction. So what we now do, I will now have this is our di this is our dienophile right here. Okay, so what I do, take the dienophile. Let me use a red pen. with uh, okay so that's our dinosaur now what do I do now I simply now just join this here we take another pen you see, just visually join this, this carbon here. 
and this carbon here. Okay, now you have your cis member ring. Keep in mind that those those other reaction gives you those other reaction gives you a cis member ring. Okay, so now you're going to have your cis member ring, which will be <coughs> this carbon here. This is uh, carbon one, right here. Two, three, four, five and six. Of course, the double bond will move to here at this point. The double bond will move to here. Okay, so let us draw the product. Now we have this is going to be here. This here, right? This, this, this massive group here will now be here. Okay, and now the other metric group will be okay, and now this will be here. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, right, right. Okay. Okay. So now that will be the product. Keep in mind that you, the basic information, the basic thing that you need to do here, this here, this six member ring, you must have this six member ring in place. And that is essentially, this is what this is right here. Okay, this is the six member ring that came from those other reactions. Uh, this other six member ring was there before. Oh, yes, right. No, 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 they have to be charged because. Uh, right, what you have here, the relationship here, is trans. You, you must maintain that relationship because this and this is going in a different direction as this here. So they have to be trans. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, they, they have to be trans. Yeah, they have to be trans. Yes, you know. Huh? Okay. How how will you rotate it? Yeah, right. Just a minute, just a minute. How will you rotate it? Like two Okay, how will you rotate it? Okay, go ahead. Where, where? There's no... No, you, ca you cannot move the double bond. You have to rotate the single bond. You see? No, 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 no. You can't do that. Okay. <laughs> You can do, you have to rotate you, you have to rotate the single bond, you cannot move the double bond. No. No, no. Oh no no no. You you cannot do resonance to move the double bond for the dose other reaction. No. 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 <laughs> so you have to rotate it, okay? Anyway, so let us Let's go to the let's go to the last one. Okay, uh the question number three. Uh Tikira, go ahead and read question number three for us. Okay. So in this case they want us to do the reverse of what we just did. Uh here you are giving the product. And you have to write the give the dyne and the dynophile, right? Okay, so what would that be? How do you go about doing that? Just if you keep this right here, right? And this right here, right? Okay. And this will be your dynophile part, and this will be your dyne part, right? Okay, very good. So therefore, that would be this here.
Okay, you do that. And now the dino power will be. The cyano group. Okay. And of course, <coughs> you have the hydrogen there. No, you don't have to. Yes, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so that would be the uh, the dinophile and the dyne dyne. Okay. Now, before we leave this, one more information I need to give you about the stereochemistry of uh, uh, those other reactions. If, for example, you have this molecule here. If you have this, and say we have this here, if you have that, <coughs> now the, uh, the product you are going to get will be this here. Okay, you have the uh, two carbon bridge, and then you are going to have hydrogen here, hydrogen here, and the, the cyano group and the methyl group will be here. Now, this we call the endo product. Okay, now you will see this better if you draw this uh, with a side, uh, a side view of the molecule. For example, it's a molecule here, looks more like this. Here, the endo product is that in which the substituent is on the opposite side of the molecule opposite to the bridge. Okay? Now, the hydrogen, of course, will be here. Okay? So, the endo product is that in which the, these two substituents here, this here, cyano group and the methyl group in this instance, will be on the opposite side, opposite to the uh, bridge. Okay? Uh, that is always what you're going to get. That will be the preferred product, as opposed to the substituent being on this side of the bridge, which you call the exo product. So the endo product is the preferred product, okay? Is that clear? Yes. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. I always miss that double bond all the time. I have something against that double bond. Okay, yes, that's correct. Yes. No, it has to be the endo. If whenever you do a bridge uh, bicyclic product in which there is a bridge uh, and there is a substituent on the uh, dinophile, that substituent will be in the endo position, in order or away from the bridge. The, the XO will be, okay, will be towards the bridge, okay? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Draw it this way or this way. So as long as you indicate that, in this case, you're showing that the, the substituents are away from the bridge. This is the bridge right here. Okay? Okay. 
Okay, now let us, what time do we have before we start our chapter 15? Oh, okay, we should be able to finish chapter 15 today. <laughs> you don't believe that? <laughs> chapter 15, by the way, is a very short uh, chapter. Okay. Well, those are just basic carbon carbon double bond reactions. Yes, yes. I mean, they contain carbon carbon double bond. The, what is the, uh, the reason why we focus on the electrophilic addition reaction is the possibility of resonance moving. You have one for addition as as. Uh, uh, plus one two addition. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. So now let us start with uh, chapter fifteen. Okay. For chapter fifteen, uh, this chapter is concerned with the chemistry of uh, benzene and benzene derivatives. Benzene and benzene derivatives. We are also going to discuss the nomenclature of this uh, uh, compounds, and very often we refer to these compounds as aromatic compounds. So we are going to, we are going to discuss aromaticity, nomenclature, aromaticity, and show you examples of uh, aromatic molecules and other. Uh, molecules that <coughs> uh, are not benzene uh, type molecules, which we refer to as non benzenoid aromatics. And of course, uh, in chapters 15 and 16, we are going to do a lot of reactions of aromatic compounds. I will tell you now, most of your exams, most of the questions from your exam will actually come from chapter 16. So you can see why. Uh, trying to get to chapter 15 as fast as we can, because that is where most of your reactions are. So, <coughs> okay. so anyway, so let us, uh, let us go over chapter 15. We'll finish chapter 15, hopefully, today. You see, don't believe that. Eh? <laughs> now, the question that comes to mind is, of course, let's do this uh, slide here, uh, as we normally do. And uh, this slide, of course, should be used as a study guide. Uh, for example, at the end of this, uh, the completion of this chapter, uh, you should be able to identify the conditions that make molecules aromatic. When we say this molecule is aromatic, exactly what do we mean by that? So you should be able to identify those conditions. And of course, write the IUPAC names for aromatic compounds, and uh, so therefore. Uh, you should come back to this slide and use it as a study guide. Now the question is, what are aromatic compounds, or what is benzene and benzene derivatives? I'm sure most of the time we have been giving you the structure of benzene, so uh, this is not new to you. But at this point, we are now going to actually begin to discuss the chemistry of this molecule. This molecule here. This is what we call benzene. And so you can see the relationship between benzene and chapter 14 that we just uh, dealt with. Uh, we could see here you have alternating double bonds in a cyclo in a six member ring uh, cyclic molecule. So therefore this molecule is conjugated. It is conjugated. Now, but there is a special aspect to this molecule. It is so conjugated that it does not want to react as a carbon-carbon double bond. You will find that most of the reactions of carbon-carbon double bond, this molecule does not undergo those reactions. Then you begin to wonder why. Okay. Now, <coughs> to take a look at the orbital picture of uh, benzene, so we begin to understand the chemistry. We start off with
a six member ring in which you have each one of these is a carbon atom and each one of them is attached to an hydrogen atom uh, using a sigma bond Okay, so that is the basic skeleton of the benzene structure. Now, let us now begin to show the orbitals, the p orbitals, because as you can see here, each one of these carbon is an sp2 hybridized carbon. Each one of these carbon in benzene is an sp2 hybridized carbon. So which means that each one of them also has a p orbital, and each p orbital contains an electron. So this p orbital is here. Also contains an electron. This key orbital is here. P orbital here. P orbital here. Okay. Each one of those P orbital contains electron. One electron each. Now, because of the nature of this, all of this carbon being sp2, each one of them containing an uh, electron, you will find that any one of these electrons here could overlap. In other words, we could have an overlap between these, right? Overlap between these. overlap between this. If we do that, what do we have? We will say benzene if we do that we will say benzene as the structure. Okay, we say the double bond is here. We say another double bond is here. We say another double bond is here. If we go by the ob those orbitals overlapping, but there is nothing stopping these orbitals to overlap in a different way. Okay, so I'm going to draw another orbital picture, the same orbital picture, and then show you another way in which these orbit those orbitals could overlap. Hydrogen here, 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 hydrogen, and hydrogen. Now let us now show the T orbital.
Okay, also now uh, each one of these contains is one electron. Okay, so instead of the overlap giving this structure here, we could have the overlap in which now this could overlap. Okay, and this could overlap. And this could overlap. So what do we have now? We now have this here. Okay? In these, these two structures are structures of benzene. But we really do not know which one, be, which one is which. We, this, to be frank, the chemists do not know the true structure of benzene. But we do know that benzene behaves as if it is either of this molecule here. So we say these two, therefore, are resonance structures of benzene. So we say benzene is an hybrid of two resonance structures. Benzene hybrid of two resonance structures. And that is because these p orbitals, those electrons in the p orbital could reside anywhere they want. There is what we call el complete electron delocalization. In other words, they could move to any of this carbon here to form the carbon-carbon double bond. So what you have here, benzene is an hybrid of these two resonance structures. Now, the consequence of this is that benzene does not react as an alkene. For example, if you take benzene, Okay. By the way, because benzene is an hybrid of two resonance structures, very often you will see us write benzene as this. Unless we want to write the reaction mechanism, you will see me simply do this. In other words, we really do not know where those double bonds are. We do not know. And okay, so what I was saying here is that if you take, if you want to do hydrogenation, your regular hydrogenation with hydrogen and some kind of catalyst, under normal condition, no reaction, nothing will happen. For you to do hydrogenation of benzene, you have to do this under very extreme condition. It is possible. You have to do it under very extreme condition. So, but under normal condition, the hydrogenation will not occur because benzene does not uh, react as though it is a carbon-carbon. It contains carbon-carbon double bond. And we also know that measurement of the bond length in benzene doesn't show that one bond is longer than the other. It shows that they all have the same length. So that further lends the argument to the fact that benzene is an hybrid of two resonance structures. The true structure of benzene we do not know. So, okay. So because of this, we say benzene is an aromatic molecule. Now, what do we mean by that? When we say a molecule is aromatic, it doesn't mean that it has good uh, fragrance. Even though that was the at the beginning of uh, organic chemistry, uh, when the, uh, a lot of people, scientists, were studying uh, this type of molecules, they actually, the, the, the word ar aromatic was based on the fact that most of these type of compounds gave very good uh, fragrance. 
So that was why they coined the word aromatic. But today, the word aromatic means something else. So when we say therefore a molecule is aromatic, we mean that that molecule is unusually unreactive, okay? And that that molecule is a cyclic molecule, and that all of the pi electrons within that molecule are conjugated. Okay, I will give, I will do, give, do better than that. Let's see, what do we mean by aromatic? Okay. 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 So when we say a molecule is aromatic, what do we mean? We mean that molecule is cyclic. All atoms in the rings are sp2 hybridized. The ring, the ring is planar. What do we mean by planar? Let me see if I can just give you something here. Okay. Look look at this here. This is what you might call benzene, right? Alternating double bond, three of them. Six member length. You see, when we say planar, it is completely flat. All of the atoms within the ring system and all the atoms that are attached to the, ring, uh, to the carbon in the ring system, they are all on the same plane. Okay? They are all on the same plane. That is what we mean by planar. Okay? Completely planar, flat. Okay, so, therefore, when we say a molecule is aromatic, we mean that that molecule must be cyclic. All the atoms within the uh, cyclic ring system must be sp2 hybridized. The ring must be planar. But more importantly, we say the number of electrons Par electrons or non-bonding electrons in some instances must be must equal to 4n plus 2, 4m plus 2, and that is what we call the Ockham's rule. Now, what do we mean by 4m plus 2? Just a minute. 4m plus 2. Pi electrons in the ring system where N N must be N must be either zero, one, two, three, or any integer. or any integer. In other words, n cannot be a fraction, 2.5, 1.5, no. Okay, n must be either 0, 1, 2, 3, or any integer, any whole number. Okay? So let us go back here. Okay, so, we said that the molecule must contain 4n plus 2 pi electron or non-bonding electron. Now, if we take a look at benzene, if we take a look at benzene, how many pi electrons do you have in benzene? How many? Six. 
six. So therefore, does our benzene obey the occult rule? Okay, so we have four n plus two equals to six. Therefore, four n equals to what is four n? Four. Therefore, n equals to one. Okay. So therefore, benzene obeys the Occles rule, which is the four m plus rule, uh, four m plus two rule. That is most important. Okay. And of course, the last aspect of this. Looking for my pen. Okay. The last aspect of this is that all the pi electrons in the ring system must be conjugated, in other words, so that you could draw resonance involving all of those pi electrons. So all of this here is what we refer to as for a molecule to be aromatic. So therefore, if I ask you for a very succinct definition of aromaticity, what will it be? Okay, you will not find this anywhere, so you might as, as well write this down. Well, you know, it's in the um, webcast. This is not in your textbook. Now, if somebody asks you, what is aromaticity? Okay, I, I define, the, I will therefore define aromaticity as the tendency of a cyclic and planar molecule or the cyclic and planar part of a molecule that contains 4m plus 2 pi electrons to exhibit unusual stability due to resonance in, 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 a, uh, in a simple, uh, for a simple definition that is what we refer to as aromaticity. In other words, this molecule we say is aromatic because it is unusually stable and it is unusually stable uh, because it, con it is a cyclic molecule. It, all of the atoms in the cyclic ring system are sp2 hybridized. It contains 4n plus 2 pi electrons and all of those electrons are conjugated so that you do write resonance structure involving all of them. That is what we mean by aromaticity. So therefore, if I give you, what time do we have? Oh no, 728. <laughs> just, just one more, okay now, just before we leave. So therefore, if I give you this molecule here, Supposing I give you this molecule, will you tell me that this molecule is aromatic? Part of the molecule is aromatic. Okay, you cannot say this molecule is aromatic. Only part of that molecule is aromatic. And that part that is aromatic is this part here. Okay? Okay. Now, if I give you this, Is that molecule aromatic? Yes. yes. This oh, this molecule is aromatic. This part of it is, mole, uh, is aromatic, and this part of it is aromatic. And if you look at this, if you look at the number of uh, the five electrons here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That four n plus two equals to ten. Okay. Four n equals to eight. Therefore, n equals to two. So this molecule is aromatic. So therefore, at this point, you should be able to recognize an aromatic molecule when you see one. So when we come back on uh, Thursday, we are going to finish uh, chapter 15 and do some problems. Uh, but in the meantime, do not forget, tomorrow uh, there will be uh, a, an online review session using our chapter 14 end of uh, problem uh, questions at 7 p.m. tomorrow, and I will send you the link tomorrow, yes.
Oh yes, 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 yes. Uh, Mayor, don't forget I got your, I got your. Uh, <laughs>